Hey guys, EV Man here, and today we're looking at affordable mini computing. We're talking about the Nuke Box 2. Check this out. And if this isn't small enough for you, well, check this one out. This is the Nuke Box. Both of these are mini computers, and both of them have 4K capabilities and are great for basic home computing needs. Let's go ahead and check them out. Now the first mini PC that we're taking a look at is the Nuke Box 2. And this features an Intel Core i5 processor with Windows 10. It has eight gigabytes of RAM, expandable up to 32, and it comes with a 256 gig NVMe SSD. Now, the cool thing about this one is that it also has the ability to have a dual display at 4K. So you can connect two monitors to this at 4K. It features Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 4.2, and then it also has several connectivities, including USB-C as well as gigabit ethernet. Now the next one that we have here in the side uh, is, the, is the smaller one. So this is the Nuke Box. This is the little baby one. And you can see uh, the big size difference as you can compare both of these. Uh, definitely both, this one right here has more power, uh, but this one has tons of convenience. Now this little guy here is the Nuke Box and it features Windows 10. It has an Intel J4125 uh, chipset. It has one HDMI 4K. 8 gig of RAM with a 512 gigabyte SSD. Uh, it has Wi-Fi capabilities both of 2.4 and 5G, as well as Bluetooth 4.2, but it features only a single 4K output. Now, as we return back to the Nukebox 2, there's a couple things I just wanted to highlight. First of all, uh, the Nukebox 2, which is my preference just because of the connectivity and options that it has, has several USB connections. So here you have uh, two USB connections you see in the front and then a Type-C a headphone jack so that you can listen to music, a power button. And then as we go on the back, this is where you have your two HDMI ports. It does come with a separate power brick that you'll use to power this. Two more USB and then it has Ethernet in the back. You can see that it has venting on the side and it also has a, uh, a SD card, right? A micro SD that you can use on the side to expand the memory. Now keep in mind, you can connect either via USB-C or USB to expand the memory as well as upgrade the hardware itself to get more space if that's something that you want. Um, and really, as we think about these type of mini computers, uh, the convenience here is that they can be tucked away. Uh, it looks like all you have is a monitor uh, and uh, they're gonna be great for browsing. Are they gonna be the gaming machines? They're not intended for gaming, but they are intended for someone who's looking for very simple computing and has a monitor and would just like to have something that's more current and running the most current version of Windows. Now, as we look at the mini here, and we'll set this one right here aside, uh, on the mini side, um, again, you can see that it has Intel inside. Here's the power button, right? And as we turn it around, it's much simpler. USB-C, which happens to be, this is the power. So it's using a USB-C power adapter to power it, HDMI, and then you have two USB 3.0s on each side. Here you have uh, your microphone. So this is headphone microphone combo, and then you have your micro SD uh, slot. Uh, again, super small. And I can tell you just from my experience running both of these is that uh, what you're gonna get from this one is more computing and it's not going to be as noisy as this one because while well, this one is small and much more convenient and I can tell you you'll notice at the bottom of each one of these you have these little screw mounts it's because you can actually mount it behind your monitor even having this one mounted behind your monitor uh, the fan on this guy because it's so small is going to be just slightly louder than the fan that you see with this guy so uh, two convenient options, great, um, again, great options when it comes to being able to have a, a computer that you're using for browsing. Um, if you wanna be able to stream Netflix and things like that, you can do that as um, these as well. And then any other, I would say, service that would come through a browser as we have so many different streaming solutions today. But let's take a look at how these two run. Now the first mini PC we're gonna take a look at is the Nukebox 2. And we've run the user benchmark test just to get a sense of what we can expect from an overall performance. Now, as you take a look at the results here, from a gaming perspective, you can see that it didn't score so well, so as a 15% score. And from a desktop perspective, though, it scored really well, 78%. And this is primarily where I would see something like this playing. So if you're looking for browsing the internet, doing some casual streaming, this is gonna be a good option for you. From a workstation perspective, you can see that it didn't perform as well as we'd like to see it, but definitely this is, uh, this is the area for this. And as we go down, you can see the overall results. Uh, you can see that the actual CPU itself uh, performed extremely well, right, 83 percentile. 
or 83rd percentile. As we go down here, you can see that the graphics card also performed really well. And then where we start seeing some degradation or maybe not enough information is going to be in the actual um, storage. So if you can see right here, the drive itself and the memory. But all in all, this is the kind of experience, at least that the benchmark says. But what I like to do is see what's real world like experience. So we're gonna go into YouTube because let's say this is something that you'd wanna do and you wanna make sure, make sure that this can run video. So we're gonna run a couple 4K videos that are on my channel that have not been cached yet. That's the important thing. So I'm connected via Wi-Fi, and what we're gonna do is just we're gonna click on this and we're gonna see how quickly it runs. For the most part, I'm just gonna go over each one of these icons so you can see how immediately it starts streaming the content behind the icon. So we'll put it on this one and see if there's anything behind that. This one seems like it has something. This one seems to have something. You can see how quickly things come up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and launch this one. All right, so here's our video. We'll go ahead and bring this to a large view. Again, special effects going on right here. You can see it's catching up and starting the stream. We'll go ahead and reduce it. Right now it's already caught up to 4K. So you can see that the quality is coming in there. We'll go ahead and reduce this again. Right, so that was uh, that first video. Let's go ahead and get out and we'll try another video to see how quickly it launches. We'll try this one, which is just a recent review that we did. Hey guys, UV Man here, and today we're gonna talk about upgrading your audio for TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, or even podcasts. This is the Saramonic 500 Pro. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now all right, so not bad. So we saw what the performance looks like there. Now, if you just wanted to go ahead and let's say, look at the news. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and check out some news here. So I'm gonna do maybe uh, CNBC. So what kind of performance we're getting. And you can see what the browser performance is like. We're gonna go over here so we can see um, some of the news, how it came up. If we wanna look at a specific article, um, you can see that it's performing well. And I think that this is the area that these little uh, mini PCs perform really well in. Uh, just being able to surf the web, get this kind of content, and then also stream content as you just saw. And another area that this is gonna perform well is just again, surfing and looking at content like this. So if you're into cryptocurrencies and you wanna know what's going on in the market, uh, you'll see here, and I'll go ahead and refresh this page. This has a lot of content on it, but again, it's very market specific. So you can see information about all the different uh, cryptocurrencies that are going on. You can zoom in and you can see, you know, again, what you can expect from a performance perspective. Now we've connected to the same 4K monitor, the same BenQ 4K monitor, the Nook Box. Uh, this is the smaller one, and we can see here that now, we are seeing some performance differences, right? For, from a gaming perspective, um, it's not as, as fast. From a desktop perspective, it does okay, but not to the same level as the previous one. And then from a workstation perspective, we have similar ratings. When we look at the overall performance of the CPU, and again, this is the Intel Celeron J4 125, you can see that it is you know, performing as expected, nothing out of the ordinary. And then when you see the graphics here, the integrated graphics, you can see that it's uh, not performing as high as we saw uh, with the other unit. Same thing is taking place with some of these other characteristics, both also the storage as well as memory. So now the next thing I want to share with you is like, what is the browsing experience? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a 4K video. This is actually a review that I just completed a couple of minutes ago on some headphones. So we're gonna go ahead and launch this. And you can see as soon as I put my pointer over it, it comes to life. The same thing is happening with these. So it seems like it's doing a pretty nice job here. Um, I don't know why it's not doing it here. Here you can see it pop up immediately in here as well. Let's go ahead and launch uh, this one right here. Let's see what happens. All right, so go ahead, let's go ahead and run that test again. I had a commercial pop up, so we'll go ahead and try it once more. Hey guys, you came in here, and in today's video, we're gonna take a this look at- This will give you kind of like a sense of the overall the performance. And I can so see that there is some really pixelation going on. It really hasn't caught up. You can see that my vocal and also the video are having somewhat of a hard time keeping up. These are not bone conductors. So you can see that. And I think this has all to do with the size of the you know, just the, the, the size of the unit is really compact and it's probably not gonna do terribly well when it comes to these. I'm gonna let it catch up a little bit and let me see if it starts working a little bit better. Yeah. Your buds or headphones. Yeah, too small. So, you know, if you're looking for this, uh, the smaller version, it's very compact and it's gonna be great if you just want to web browse, but really streaming, you can see that it's having um, some difficulty. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Nukebox and the Nukebox 2. See you in the next one.